Hello everyone and welcome to Happy Thoughts. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell so that you don't miss anything. Today I wanted to talk to you about writing groups, specifically critique groups. You are just starting out with your writing and you are looking for a way to take it to the next level and to to learn a lot and to become a part of the uh, the, the larger writing community. There's really no better way to do that than by joining uh, writing groups and by joining critique groups and actually allowing people who aren't your mom to see your work. So um, today I didn't want to talk about how to find a critique group or how to deal with some of the anxieties that can be related to that. I know that that's uh, that was a big part of it for me when I first decided to join a group was just getting over my nerves at letting strangers um, <laughs> see see what I was writing. So, uh, but we're not going to be talking about that today. I wanted to just give you an give you an introduction to critique groups and what they're like, and specifically what the benefits are of being a part of a good critique group and what it is that makes a good critique group. The kind of group you want to keep going back to time after time and, get, and then that you keep learning from, that you keep learning from, even if you may have had, you know, thousands of hours of conversations with these people. What better way to introduce everybody to critique groups than by introducing you to one of my critique groups? We recently went on a writing retreat, which is a very fun thing that you get to do when you're in a writing group and you get close with these people. You get to go um, on a retreat where you can forget about your job and your kids and your family and, and your broken car and your dirty dishes and all the things that um, either stop you from writing or that you use as a distraction from writing, if you know what I mean. You know who you are. Um, you get to forget about all those things and you get to just focus on writing. So while we were at our retreat in Manti, Utah, jealous, I decided to take it as an opportunity to interview my own group and get their impressions about what makes a good critique group and what the benefits are of being a part of a critique group. Without further yada, 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 I'll introduce you to some of my friends. My name is Coral. My author names are Coral Elizabeth on my novels and then Coral Hayward on the picture books that I work on. So those are my two basic areas of writing. I do novels that are YA and middle grade. I've done science fiction, fantasy. I'm going to be working on some steampunk adventure romances. Right. Um, my picture books are therapeutic, so they're for, mostly for kids who've experienced loss, like loss of a parent. Um, and then my sisters do the illustrations. We're doing the whole lineup of therapeutic They're very sweet. <laughs> sure, sure. So I'm Daniel Marietta. Um, I write poetry. I've gotten a little bit of horror in there. Um, most of poetry. horror poetry in the future. Looking towards it today. <laughs> Should I look at the camera? You can look at me. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, I'm Carolyn Hopert. I write a little bit of everything. I guess I haven't solidified on the genre yet. I am currently writing an adult steampunk Egyptian mystery romance. Um, and I've written some YA and some middle grade that lean sci-fi. And then I write blog posts for uh, Vanilla Grass. Yeah. So my name is Roy Hayward, so, and uh, I write words, lots, lots of words. <laughs> I have a trilogy of uh, of sci-fi books, starting with Arbor Colony, and then uh, uh, about it, about it, people that colonize a forest planet, you know, right. and, uh, and not a very friendly one. It, it doesn't turn out as expected, <laughs> um, and uh, they don't find Ewoks. Let's just say that. So uh, that's probably that's good. That, 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 <laughs> then uh, the second one in the series, uh, Sea to Stars, um, continuing that story of colonists, mm -hmm. and uh, um, both those books are are out. Um, the third in the trilogy has a title of a working title of Space Forest, mm -hmm. um, which wraps up the story of these colonists. Um, and the uh, the fourth book in the trilogy is about their descendants. Um, and it hasn't, doesn't have a title yet, okay. 
Um, you, people can, you can complain about having four books in a trilogy if you want, but I'm self-published. I, can, I don't care. <laughs> so the first so, two books are on Amazon. Yeah, they're out there on Amazon. Um, I have a, a short story that's steampunk that was picked up in an anthology mm-hmm. published by Immortal Works. It's called... Um, Am I topping my foot? Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. I'm going to have to edit all that out. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's okay. There won't be any words left. Uh, my name is Janelle Youngstrom. I'm talking to you. Yes. Um, <laughs> and a little bit about me, oh, what I write. I, um, I write middle grade fantasy right now and also picture books, mostly. Uh, all fiction. How many picture books have you done? Um, I've written 31 so far. So, yes, <laughs> that's where I started. So I started writing picture books, and then my critique group told me that my ideas were becoming too complicated mm-hmm. for picture books, so I had to start writing novels. And I fought against it for a while, but then I finally embraced it, and I said, okay, and so I gave it a try. So I've been kind of learning how to write a, picture, a middle grade novel for about five or six years. I'm Josh Wilcox. I write science fiction and fantasy, mostly YA, but some adult, and I, I think that's about it. <laughs> okay, um, so you are our bold and fearless leader in our writing group. You organize everything. If you say so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, well, I think the greatest part is probably just the friendship. I mean, it's it's fantastic to have other writers that you can talk to and lean on and ask questions of and get the hard feedback that you don't want to hear from and but i mean in the end like it just gives you people who you have something in common with and this thing that you're very passionate about you know, that you're able to talk to people about writing and i think that forms like a pretty quick bond i don't know if it's necessarily instant because there's always that feeling out there a period when you right. first have someone join a group but yeah that's 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 the the greatest part i think the next greatest part is if you're in a good writing group i think it always pushes you to be better and and i think you can help other people get better and you can get the help you need to get better hopefully Oops. there are a lot of benefits to being in a writing group um I think there's two really big ones for me. Motivation to keep writing, even when I feel stuck because it's like homework, I want to have something to read. And so most of the time I do have something to read by the time I get to writer's group because I made myself actually mm-hmm. finish. Yeah. Um, and then just being able to hear what other people are working on and feedback, not just for my own stories, but for other people just really helps to like understand the craft and get a better toolbox to work with. Sure, sure. So, I mean, when you when you write on your own, um, it's fun, it looks cute, uh, but you don't realize what you can improve until you talk to people. Mm-hmm. Um, and just straight from college when I started doing writing groups, I just realized how important that could be to your, your writing capabilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's two main ones. Uh, the first would be the friendships and the relationships you make. I I have made some of the best ones I've had since joining the writing community, um, and I wouldn't give that up for the world. <laughs> um, the second is just the motivation you have from being with people who are on the same journey as you, the mm-hmm. solidarity, um, and yeah, I guess just the journey, because yeah. it, it allows you to be more compassionate with yourself to know that you're not alone. Feel that it's a commitment device for me. It keeps me knowing that if I, if I slack off, if I don't, if I don't get any time and, and put into to writing, that I will, uh, I will not have anything to bring, and I will either come without something to read, um, which will make me feel like I am not taking advantage of the opportunity, mm-hmm. or I won't. If I don't go, then that's again, that's not taking. It. And so it's a, it's a commitment. It's, it's kind of a. Uh, self-imposed commitment. It's not the group. The group doesn't like bash me if, if I don't right, read something. Right. They're all nice about it and everything. It's more time for them. Um, but uh, but I feel like it's a it's a wasted opportunity for me. Right. And since I'm finally at this point in my life trying to be serious about this as a as, as a pursuit, um, I don't want to waste opportunities. I think after the the commitment device that it is for me, um, having a group of people that um, <clears throat> that are discussing the craft. Uh, every week is helpful, and I've learned I've learned a lot um, from other people's questions. It's not just me coming and saying, 
well, everybody, uh, I have no idea how to make a story work. Right. And having someone tell me, it's having somebody else come and say, I don't know if this is more important in, to put into this scene yeah. or not. And then, like exploring the problems yeah. and other things. And so then you, 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 you think to yourself, wow, that's a great question. I'd never, I've never had this question, but I probably should have. You know? yeah. And, yeah. and so you get to have those discussions. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so I, I know in our group, we do our reading you know, and our critique. Yeah. And then um, probably more than half the time, we spill over into a discussion of writing craft. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, and stuff that's not necessarily related to anything we wrote, we read that day, mm -hmm. but just you know, <laughs> the slight stuff. thread to it. Um, <laughs> um, that's a hard one. There's lots of really good benefits to being in the critique group. So I was, um, I'm trying to figure it out because I really love the camaraderie, like other writers writing, you know, and I think that it's good motivation for me to be like, okay. I'm going to writing group on Tuesday. I have to have something, so it, it kind of does motivate me to write. Um, but I also, I think I need that that feedback that says, okay, this is really working, and this is really not working, or there's things that are just missing, or you've lost opportunities and stuff like that. And you know, when you're writing it, you can't really see, all all of it's up in my head, you know. So I know that the story's there, but what's actually on the page is so kind of very different than what I want it to be. So. Right. I actually started going to writers groups when I was in junior high. That, that was the fair, fantasy writers right. club, <laughs> which was like all my friends and uh, my first experience with public school. So I was totally a novice to everything about the social scene. Mm -hmm. And so I just went because that's where my one friend was going. And then I made a bunch of new friends. Okay. And then I've gone to writers groups since then. I went to one in college. And then I eventually started coming to the movie where we both go to. Right. Um, and that one's because my dad had found it, and so then I started going with him. Mm -hmm. I tried to find a few others, and so finding the right one was a little hard. Yeah, that can be difficult. And have anxiety about finding one in general. Just finding just the finding right the right group. one, because I went to a couple that I didn't go back to. In college, I did it, so I didn't quite have that. Mm -hmm. um, I did when I started my novel, because I have mm -hmm. no idea what I'm doing, and I, um, so I did have quite a bit of anxiety, but it's it's still nice. So, me, I think more than joining the group was reading for the first time in group. That yeah. that was very nerve wracking for me. Um, and I think so, we we use a, a read aloud format in our group. So you have to get over the anxiety of actually reading your stuff out loud, not just showing it to people. So there's a, another element to it. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that that was probably the hardest for me to just like read and mm -hmm. get that feedback for the first time when I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. But I was desperate for a community because I didn't know so much. Mm -hmm. And I learned faster experiencing it with people than just searching for things I don't know what to search for. Yeah, yeah so I had anxiety about most things. Uh -huh. um, and writing, joining a writing group wasn't any different. Um, uh, I've been told uh, for years and years that joining a writing group and being in a critique group particularly type of thing mm -hmm. was going to be good and helpful to me. And uh, I'm a lonely, I'm a loner type of person, and I didn't, I, like I just didn't do it. I just didn't do it. I, I would see that people had them. I'd hear them talking about them on their blogs or on their podcasts or whatever, and I just think to myself, yeah, I'm just not ready for that yet. I'm, I'm not that good of a writer. If I did that, people will, you know, I'd show up at the writing group and uh, people would look at me and they'd like, what are you doing here? You know, mm -hmm. you're not a real writer. Go back home. Come back when you publish something, type of thing. Which is completely wrong, and I knew it all the time. It was mm -hmm. completely wrong to think that way. But you know, your brain, your brain comes up with reasons not to go and do something uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, it's funny because um, not really. I d I don't think I understood what it was. I think mm -hmm. after a while, I was <laughs> like, okay, why do I? Why do I keep doing this? <laughs> or like if I write a chapter I'm really not sure of, it makes me very nervous to go to critique group because okay. I know like the feedback I'm getting is probably not what I want to hear, but I need to hear it, you know? So, but at first I was like, hey, this is fun, you know, let's yeah. so the do anxiety it. set in slowly as <laughs> right. I got more Because I understood a little bit more like what a critique group actually is. Right, so, right. Yeah. So, so um, when you first decided to join a critique group, was it difficult for you? Did you have any anxiety about it? I don't know if it was difficult for me. I think I was, I think I knew 
that I had no idea what I was doing at that point. I had spent four years writing a book and I had been reading stuff online and trying to take all that stuff and put it into the book, but I had no idea if it was working or not. Mm -hmm. I thought it was working, but then I would have asked someone to read it and they'd be like, ah, I couldn't get into it, you know? And, and I was like, I don't, I don't know what this means. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Right. And so I figured I'd go to a writing group and because at that point I, I had no idea what else to do. I was just like, I need help from other people who maybe know what they're doing. <laughs> And I thought, oh, I'll go to a writing group. And I don't think I was afraid, but I thought, I probably thought that I was closer to where I needed to be than I was. You know? <laughs> right. And I got there and I think that when I started getting the feedback that I was getting, it kind of opened my eyes to like, oh, wow, I have so much to learn. And I think that if you're afraid of getting feedback, it would make it hard to go to a writing group but i was looking for feedback you know i wasn't looking for validation i was probably hoping for it. yeah but that's an important distinction you're actually looking for feedback and a critique versus just looking for somebody to tell you how great it is that's definitely <laughs> right? true yeah because you know you you're hoping that you're just going to be like oh this is great everyone's going to say how yeah. great it is but <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I feel like if that was the case, you know, you'd be reading that in the New York Times, you, you know, mm -hmm. about how great your book is. And so I, I think if you're going there and hoping to get some good feedback and then you find feedback that is, that makes sense and that you can make sense of, then that is where you're going to get the most out of it. So I got really lucky with my first writing group and I just got sat down there after <laughs> writing group and was like okay here's what you need to start focusing on and, mm. and that kind of opened up my eyes to a whole different world of, of writing and of writing groups and that's kind of why i fell in love with them for sure. yeah um having people who have um, similar skill levels, I think, is one of the important things. Like, the having people who are writing in kind of the same area, not necessarily the same genre, but on the same level, so that we can really help each other mm -hmm. without it being like someone feeling super out of their depth or someone feeling like they're not getting anything. Right. Is important. And then just being... Just being nice. People need to not judge other people's content. Mm -hmm. um, and people... and. This one's hard, but being able to not take people's comments too personally, right? That's if one of the about skills the content. <laughs> you have to develop when you're when you're in a writing group is not taking it too yeah. personally if somebody disagrees with something that you did. Or right. Anything. So just having a good dynamic where people are nice mm -hmm. will give you helpful feedback right. and not make it personal. Okay. Yes. Sure. Um, so it helps if people have, I guess, read uh, read up on you. So I'm terrible at out, out outlines, so it helps to have somebody who knows what they're doing outlines. Mm -hmm. um, it helps to have people who have read all kinds of different books from different genres uh, that I haven't read and that can recommend what things I can, can, uh, can not copy over, but re resemble in my, my literature. Um, so it helps to get that kind of experience that you um, I think first is positivity. I think you need to get feedback, but I think you need to give praise as well uh, in that feedback. You can't all just be criticism. So I think a group that understands that uh, is important. I think and uh, a group desire to have everyone succeed is necessary. Mm -hmm. There's no benefit to being in a group where you're just trying to one-up each other the whole time. Right. Um, you just have to be supportive of where everyone's at in their journey because it's going to be different in a group. You're, you're all going to be in different places. Right. Um, and then the last thing I'd say was um, just showing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. <laughs> it is, yeah. you know. So many people give up on their journey and they give up on their group. And even if you're in a spot where you're not progressing how you want to progress, you still have to just keep showing up. And if you do, you'll get back on the horse and you'll keep going. I think um, as a group, we have a pretty good, friendly set of relationships that are going on where um, we can have just conversations about mm -hmm. 
stuff that is really not related to writing. Yeah. And it's still okay because we are okay yeah. with it. You we, know? we even talked about politics last Which night really and didn't dangerous. end up hating each other. So really dangerous to do that. It's important but, to, uh, to get along with people. It was, real, it was a big <laughs> risk last night. Um, yeah. And, uh, and since we're pretty much a dry group, you know, we couldn't even blame alcohol, you know, so well, on the I mean, discussion. I could, but... Uh, we all have decided this is something we want to do, and uh, it's something that we uh, are doing because we get something out of it. One more beyond that okay. is that um, I have heard of a lot of writing groups that are very large and that have right. a lot of people. And although it's really tempting to like having saying, hey, I've got a really good writing group. Let me go tell all my friends and we'll all show up at this writing group. Mm -hmm. And then there will be like 25 of us. I think that would really make it difficult to do an effective writing group. Um, we have seven right now. Mm -hmm. um, maybe eight if some of the people that never show, show, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think at, at this number, um, we have enough where we can all talk and participate. Yeah. People aren't left out. Especially a group that's focused on yeah. critique. You yeah. need to keep it smaller you so everybody you, has you time. You know, and... otherwise it's, you know, you're not gonna have enough time in a, in a, in a setting where you're yeah. gonna be awake. <laughs> you, know, because... you know, that's a really good question too. I think it's, um, if it's based on the writing, so if the critique group is, is solely focused on the writing and everyone is interested in writing and not just as a social interaction type mm -hmm. of a thing, um, that's what makes a good writing group. Everyone, they're self-motivated not only to write but also to learn and then to like help each other grow because of the things that they are learning and doing if you're in it just for social reasons then if my friend's not going to critique group then i'm not going to be there you know mm -hmm. and then yeah. it all kind of falls apart but if you're all writing consistently and you have projects in the works and you're trying to develop your career and all of those things then um then it keeps that group really strong you know okay. it's gonna go no matter who's there or who's not there because it, it's about the writing it's not about the people right yeah they, people you are happy to see definitely help yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you don't want to see the people that you're going to see then that that doesn't help but i think i think the big thing as far as writing goes is if everyone's interested in growing their craft you know, sometimes you'll get some people who will come there and they just want to give feedback, but they're not actively trying to progress and learn and be part of a group of learning. And I think that that's the biggest thing. If you can get people who are all looking to develop and are all at least somewhat humble about it and willing to say, I, there is room for me to grow, then everyone's looking to grow and everyone's trying to help each other grow. And because there's so many blind spots you can't see in your own writing. Right. And we all have them, so if we can all provide a different view, then I think that that's, that's the biggest thing everyone looking to grow. Okay. <laughs> um, so one last question. What is the most memorable book you've ever read? Memorable. I've read a lot of books. I remember a lot of them. Okay. But I think the one that I would pick as the most memorable is actually the Screw Tape Letters. I Screw Tape, yes, excellent was. book. Excellent. So good. I've reread it. I actually my first introduction to it was in a logic class as a kid yeah. that I did for homeschool, mm -hmm. and so it was like really cool. But I didn't understand most of it because yeah. I was like eight. That's a C.S. Lewis uh, discussion of demons. Uh, good book. Check it's it out. letters that a uh, one devil is writing to another, to a younger devil, mentoring him yeah. on how to tempt yeah. humanity. Very, which, very interesting Christian philosophy. Have very you, have interesting. Have you listened to the audiobook by John Cleese? I haven't. It's amazing. So. Okay, I'm gonna have to listen to it. I've read it several times, and every yeah. time I read it, I like get something new out yeah. of it. So I'd love yeah, to listen to it, but because it has such a good twist on like the. It, just analyzes the way we think mm -hmm. and makes you think about the way we think. So I've, yeah. I think um, what made up word would you add to the English language if you could? Um, I couldn't think of one, but, but, <laughs> um, if I were to change the English language, um, I would add to the basics. So in, in English, you constantly find, you know, the biggest example ever is when you're getting a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you're saying, I, I like you, I really like you. I care about you and I love you. And there's there's such a gap between 
these simple things we don't have in the English language, mm -hmm. and that we, we lose a lot of uh, depth and value in, in our in our speech. Uh, that I think we could have we could just add more of that. We got all these complex words. I don't need to add more complex words. Just right. the simple stuff. Question: What era of, of history would you choose to live in? See, this is hard because I really hate sweating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if you discovered you were immortal, how would you change your life starting right now? Well, uh, I can tell you, I've given this a lot of thought over the years. <laughs> this, is, this is something that I wake up at night thinking about. And uh, um, I think the first thing that I would do is I would be canceling all my life insurance policies. Because... <laughs> you ever had a crush on a fictional character? And if so, who was it? Yes, I have, actually. I felt really guilty about it, too, which is funny. Um, because it was Edward from Twilight. <laughs> I know people like hate Twilight and the writing is not great, but she does a really good job of making Edward like super hot. So, <laughs> so last question. What is the least meaningful book you have ever read? I feel like that's really rough. It's like a trap. <laughs> you mean besides my own? <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? that? Just, I knew you, you were going to say that. that <laughs> you can fix that in post, right? Yeah. Thank you to everybody in Nine Bridges Lehigh for letting me film you and put you up on the internet. I know some of you were not super excited about that, but you were amazing. And I think you gave a really good picture about what a critique group can do to help new writers and experienced writers and how necessary it is to be a part of a good critique group that you can trust and who can go on your journey with you. Here are some of the main benefits of being a part of a good critique group. So the one that kept coming up over and over again was accountability and the motivation to keep writing. Knowing that you need to share something with your group gives a lot of people um, just that extra push that they need to make time for writing in their life when they easily could be distracted by the dozens of other things that they need to be doing. Um, friendships with other writers, strong bonds that you can, you can grow with these people who have this major thing in common with you. Um, yeah, that, that can be, that can be one of the biggest benefits of being in a writing group. Um, just the other people that you'll meet, uh, and a, a good writing group pushes you to be better. They, they are able to help you see what you're good at and they're able to help you see what you're not so good at so that you can, you can work on those things, you can develop those talents and you can work on those weaknesses. Um, of course, hearing the feedback from others, that's the main reason why you join a critique group, but uh, learning how to take feedback can be just as important as actually getting the feedback, learning to not take it so personally. You have an opportunity, a regular opportunity to discuss the craft with other people who are involved in it and who are constantly learning from it. So those discussions of craft um, are almost, almost like, a, like a college conversation sort of course where you, you're, you constantly get to, uh, to question your own ideas and be recommended books and and courses and all sorts of new things to help you learn to be a better writer and uh, last but definitely not least the solidarity that you get from being part of a community of people who are on the same journey with you writing can be lonely and ha knowing that there are other people out there who are going through the same thing that you are can make all the difference and as carolyn said um, and I absolutely agree, it can help you to be more compassionate with yourself. Because sometimes we can be really hard on ourselves as writers. We think, oh, that scene I just wrote wasn't perfect, and therefore I'm useless, I'll never, I'll never be any good. But it helps you, if you're, you're constantly reading and critiquing other people's works, you see nobody's perfect. It's a long journey, and you have to, you have to be kind, you have to learn to be kind to yourself. So some of, some of the keys to success for a, a good uh, critique group that can that can be with you for the long haul uh, 
Similar skill levels is important. You don't want a bunch of people who are just barely starting out and a bunch of people who are already published in the same writing group because then it can become a situation where some people don't have anything to contribute and others don't feel like they're really getting much out of the experience other than you know being able to be a mentor. But that's not necessarily what you're looking for when you join a, a writing group. Um, again, being nice and non-judgmental uh, being sure to offer honey with your vinegar. It's not just about giving criticism. You also want to make sure that you give praise. Showing up, just, just coming to the group and being there time after time, week after week or month after month or however often you meet. Uh, it, it can give you that accountability. It can help you build a writing habit if you don't already have one. Um, but maybe the most important one, in my opinion, is having a group of people who are motivated to learn, who are motivated to get better so that you're more than just a group of people coming together to talk about each other's writing. You become a community of learners who are constantly pushing each other on to the next level. And that's what can distinguish a really great writing group from just a good writing group. If there are any questions I didn't answer, if you would like to see more videos about critique groups, maybe discussing um, actual procedures of critique groups or how to find a good uh, in-person or online critique group or um, discussions of beta readers, which is a different thing from having a critique group because sometimes you need to have somebody read the entire novel, not just hear a few sections once a week. Um, and also uh, about to talk about the anxiety of showing your work to other people. There definitely is going to be a video about that in the future because there are levels of anxiety based on which people you are showing your work to in this business. And one of the places it starts is with a critique group. So once again, thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please Click the subscribe button right here in the corner and make sure you hit the bell so that you don't miss anything. Um, I've been Leia Smith and happy writing. Every once in a while, it's like some great bubble of thought floats around in a mysterious hemisphere just above my head. It's not every moment that something meaningful hovers over me, but sometimes I catch something. An idea builds itself before my mind, like an image or a story, perhaps even a message. From peaks of inspiration, I weave their fabric onto pages of poetry. As I flow with its rhythms, its beats, its assonance, its rhyme, inscribing in detail what vision, what connection I had with the gift, I begin to sing a song. A melody, a tune, swift or soft gently graces the works like a scarf blown in the wind, or bellows loud as a meteor crashing into earth. Many times it feels like the epiphany had traveled from, from some distant place or person, some being from the outer realm who was gently singing to me. And finally, when I capture every wit of the song, I add my soul, my effort, my sweat to make the poem perfect. In the company of friends, of critics and editors, on auditoriums of listeners, I mold it until it for, until it, its words forever hum like a masterpiece. Um, and this is not me saying get out of your comfort zone. You should be in a no. I don't get out of my comfort zone anytime I can avoid <laughs> it. I like my comfort zone. That's why it's my comfort zone. So you uh, should get out of your comfort zone. No, and don't. Join a writing well, group. You, when you, when, when, <laughs> my advice. Is